All right, so at this point, we quickly created an interface for our project. It's, it's, it's a big shell still. It doesn't have any real functionality yet, but this uh, is going to be a good starting point. So we can close the web browser at this point if you want, because remember, if we close this screen or navigate away from it, we will lose this. I know that I've downloaded my copy. Mine is safe, so I will close it, maybe just to free up a few resources because we know that Chrome likes to eat up those resources. So I'm going to get then into my desktop here. I saved this onto my flash drive and I extracted it. And however you want to save your files is fine, but I'm going to make a suggestion. So on my flash drive, I've got a folder called Android One. So I've got a folder for all of the stuff of this class. You can save your files however you want, but I'm saving them in a folder called Android One. And in here I've been saving everything. There's the previous week's work, and that's where I saved the zip file. And when I extracted the zip file, it made that folder. And in that folder, I've got my mobile website. So the point is, you want to make sure you've extracted your mobile website folder. So let's take a look at it actually. Go to your go to Windows go, go to the Explorer window and go to the mobile website and let's look what it gave us because this is why we couldn't simply go to view code and copy the code because look what it gave us. An index HTML file codica.extra or external whatever I'm going to usually call it extra codica.extra.css and codica.extra.js. So here it's already giving us this foundation where we've got the uh, content layer, the presentation layer, and the behavior layer. Remember that? That's basically the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript. And all of those have been separated into their own files. Um, so we'll look at what's in them in a moment. But just make a note that this is called index.html. Usually the very first page of a website, and in our case our app, is going to be called index.html. We can have index.html, aboutus.html, map.html, artclasses.html. We can have separate HTML files. But we should have an index.html because once we get this into an actual app, container, it will assume that you have an index HTML file. We can change it so that it, 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 can, it points to an, a main.html file if we want. But the default in web design, in our apps and such, will be index.html. And Kodika helpfully named it for us. Let's right-click your index HTML file, open with no wait, uh, right click index and there it is, index, edit with notepad. You want to right click index HTML, edit with notepad plus plus. We're going to examine what we got here. In my case it's about 111 lines of code, yours may be more or less, that's fine but this is an HTML5 standard document. I see that on doc type. And then it starts HTML. I have a head section that goes on from about line 3 to 24. I see a body section that goes to the end. I see comments here and there. There's my car set. We've seen that before. Then we've got viewports. We've seen that before. Remember we talked about adding a viewport to make it mobile friendly. Question. You haven't extracted your project, it's still in the zip file. So what you want to do is ex you want to back up one level and hit uh, your zip file, right click extract. And then when it's then when it's a normal folder, then it should work what we're talking about. Yes. So we've seen these items so far. Then we've got these two items here that for the moment we'll leave them, but later we'll remove them. Number six and seven. 
Apple mobile web app capable. It's a these are meta tags. Apple Apple mobile web app capable and status bar style. These are specifically for Apple devices. If someone visits if someone visits your um, project, your website, in a mobile device, an Apple mobile device, it'll look a little bit different than for people on an Android device or Windows device and such. For the moment, we'll leave it, but we can, we'll need to remove it later when we actually make this into a full app. There's no title, because what actually happens is um, the very first heading in our data roll page will show up in title. So we don't have any title here. Don't worry about it because it'll just take whatever we write on line 30, let's say. Some empty spaces here. We've got link rel style sheet. Well, this is linking to a style sheet jQuery mobile style sheet. We've seen something like this before. We linked to, when we did it manually, we linked to jQuery mobile online on a different server. This one's going to cloudfront.net, but we link directly to the jQuery server. So actually there's, there's different servers throughout the world that hold these resources for us, that hold jQuery mobile, that hold jQuery, that hold other libraries. And so that's pretty useful if you've got an internet connection. If we lose our internet connection, our project will suddenly break down because then it doesn't have access to these online resources. So a little bit later we will we will create the local versions. But notice also it's pointing to jQuery Mobile version 1.3.1. The latest one is 1.4.5. So I suppose we could change the version numbers there, but don't worry about doing that. We're gonna download a local version a little later. That's going to be better for us because then we won't need to rely on an internet connection. There's our CSS file. Then we've got link rel style sheet Kodika external CSS, Kodika extra CSS. So in short, this is where we're going to write our own custom CSS later. If we want to change the look and the design of the project, and we do, because we don't want those boring built-in colors, we want the colors of our company, we'll be able to write our own custom code right here. Then there's a link to jQuery and jQuery Mobile. jQuery 191, which is old, and jQuery Mobile 131, which is old. And then this one's kind of odd. It's also linking to J it's also linking to Kodika.extra, but on the server. So there's a server version up online as well. It's not pointing to the one we have locally on our folder. We're gonna change that. And then we've got a the body and a comment, an HTML comment, and then the main data role page. We've seen that before. And this has got an ID of page one, which we need a better name later. But notice, as I've said, oftentimes you see people using the generic div. This is still going to work perfectly fine like we learned on Thursday, but it's not as modern as it could be. We want to use what we learned on Thursday. Section, article, etc. So we'll have to take a moment to upgrade this. You might be thinking at a certain point, that why did we even bother with this if we're going to need to change it so much? Well, I think this is really good starting point. We could write all of this ourselves. We could go back to the file that we started on Thursday and work with that. But for all its uh, negatives, I think there's a lot of positives to starting with you know, a rapid prototyping tool. Well, we talked about it several times last time, which was to create a brand new screen full of content. We're going to have a screen for the home screen. We're going to have a screen for the computer's screen, a screen for the art screen. Those are all going to be separated with data role page. We'll have a brand new screen of content when we've got data role equals page. We've got a div, data theme, data role header. Okay, so then this div is going to encompass the header, which we will need to change that to the appropriate tag later. Data position fixed. We saw that that fixes it upon the, the top of the screen. 
We've got that header text. Here's one we haven't seen yet. Div data role navbar. Navbar is what lets us create that cool horizontal navbar at the top. And it's actually based on a good old unordered list. Remember a long time ago when we talked about bullet points? This navbar is made out of an this navbar is made out of bullet points. Unordered list, list item, list item. There's the home button. There's the art button. There's the PC button. They're bullet points. But because they're inside of a div, which we will use something else, but it's got a data role of navbar, it upgrades it from a list to a cool horizontal navbar with rollover effects and shadows and icons and all that. And that's because of jQuery Mobile. So there's the home button. It's got a link to page one. It's just linking to itself. There's only one page. Data transition fade. The data icon pops to the top. What's that thing there? Well, logically, when we were over on the Kodika editor, remember there was the option to put icons on the top or the bottom or the left or the right of the navbar? This is the position of the icons, and we've got it at top. There's our home button. There's our home icon, and this is something we've, we haven't seen before either, class ui-btn-active space ui-state-persist. That long thing there is basically when we were in Kodika and we selected initially active yes or no, we put yes. So that's how we make a button be highlighted and stay highlighted. Highlighted is active and persist is that it stays highlighted. That was that little bit of user experience to let people know, if I'm on the home screen, make the home screen active to show me I'm on the home screen. When I go to the computer screen, I want to do the same thing to let people know I'm on the computer screen. Art button, PC button, and then that div ends. This is why we want to eventually upgrade this not from plain old divs, because I'm going to lose track. What is that div? If it's named as the appropriate element, like section, header, and such, I can tell what they are. When it's a generic div, I can't tell what it is at a glance. But when we upgrade that to a nav element, we'll be able to know that's the nav. Data role content. What should this be instead of div? Section. Oh, article. Article. Exactly. We'll get to that. That's got a heading, some text. Div data role. Okay, here's a new one. Data role collapsible set. This is what's making that collapsible set, those drawers that open up. Basically, we've got a generic div container, and this one's okay to be a div. There's no specific tag that will work with this element. So we will keep it as a div, but then it gets upgrade, upgraded from a plain old transparent container into a collapsible set with data role. And data role is coming from jQuery Mobile. So there's divs inside of divs, boxes inside of boxes, and there's a box that is for Art 101, 102, etc. And each one has a div. Each particular drawer in the box is a collapsible object, data role collapsible. And whatever stuff we put in here will be inside of the drawer that we can open and close. This could be as long as we want. This could be a whole complete database in there. That goes on for a few lines. jQuery Mobile and modern websites and such are pretty consistent, but here's one place where it's not consistent, and maybe on a future version of jQuery Mobile they'll make it consistent. This is the list view component, data role list view. But it's attached directly to a bullet point list, instead of there being, for example, a div and then the, the thing inside of it. So here's one inconsistency that we just have to learn, that if we want to make a list view element, it's data role, but it's added to the unordered list. And also that we have data divider. There's a divider with a theme color, something called data inset, which we haven't talked about yet, I believe. True. 
We can change it to false. We'll see what that does later. There's the actual divider here, which is a list item, a bullet point. But that has a data role of list divider and a role of heading. That's the text there. <clears throat> Let's see. That's going to be the part. Right here, divider. So the list divider and it's a heading and it's the word divider and it's those dividers. Inside of each section, it's another list item. It's got a theme, although this is not uh, valid anymore. There's no data theme seen yet. And then there's a there's a button. You see those buttons, and then there are links with an animation. So a data transition slide. This is going to slide over once you click on it. The list view is for this whole thing here, yes. So all of these all of these things here together is one list view. And each individual item is either a divider or a button. And you can't see it, you cannot see it, but the last thing that we added was that uh, that grid divider. Well, we left it, we added it, but we didn't put anything in it, so it's invisible. But it's right there. Can you see it? It's invisible. But I can see it here in the code. Uh, right here in the code. It's a div. It's a generic container, and the div will work fine here. And that's got, this is an, another inconsistency. It's got a class, ui-gridA. So it's basically one row, two columns. If we wanted two columns, that would be grid B. If you wanted three columns, grid C. Um, I believe we can have eight columns, but then it's getting tight. And if we want more rows, well, we just add more of these blocks, block A and B and C and so forth. Not quite intuitive, but this is a way to divide up our screen into rows and columns. And whatever we put inside of the div, since there's nothing, I can't see anything on screen. But if I put anything inside the divs, pictures, text, video, maps, bullet points, anything, they will then be divided into perfectly aligned columns. That's what the grid does. Eventually we get to the end of content, but we can't tell it's content because it's a generic div. And then we get to the footer, data roll footer, fixed, that ends then the whole div of section ends, and then the body, and then the document. So some things that are reminiscent of what we've learned, and some things that are new. Any questions so far? Why is that inconsistent? The inconsistency... I think the inconsistency happens because <clears throat> jQuery Mobile is a global project. It's not owned by one company. There's a team behind it, and it's a global team. So whenever a lot of people get together to make decisions, you know, there's not always a unanimous decision. So I think just as the project was being developed, and you know, some aspect of the team wanted to do it this way, and some aspect wanted to do it another way, and then there's kind of inconsistencies here and there. But usually as the projects evolve and mature, those things get worked out. And probably in the future, these inconsistencies will go away. Well, by inconsistency, we've been seeing over and over. We've been seeing over and over that we've got something like data role, data role, data, data, data. But then this one is UI, UI. So either way that they decide to either use UI or data, that would be consistent. Here it's inconsistent because sometimes it's UI and sometimes it's data. And the sometimes is we just have to memorize it, basically. Yes? Um, you said like on, there's a lot of divs that are kind of generic or you can't tell. Um, you can add comments, right? Sure. How do, how do we add, uh, I'm new to this one. How do I add comments to... Uh, <coughs> but we have an example at the top. You notice these green lines. Those are comments. Those are HTML comments. So so that's 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 that. Exactly, and notice how it ends here. So in between those two are comments. So yep, you can definitely comment. 
Okay, so let's take a moment to actually upgrade this to something that we really want to work with. Uh, so what I want to do is... Um, oh, one thing, uh, people, a couple people asked me. So we've got it in Notepad. We could easily then go to run Firefox like we've always done. Well, if you go to Chrome and you try to launch this, you're going to get the spinning, the spinning, you know, weight icon. And that's because Chrome is being a big old nanny and not letting us do something. It's not letting us, from our local file, connect to an online file. So none of these files load up and therefore our project never loads up. So if we go with Firefox, it says, oh, you're a big boy, you can do what you want. So we do. But eventually we will download those files locally. Uh, we'll get back to that in a moment. What I want to do is first deal with the structural elements of the of the document. I want to change these generic divs to the appropriate semantic div, the uh, the semantic HTML, the one that has a meaning. So I'm just going to make a note that on my line 27 is where the div of data role page starts, and it ends down on 109. I'm making a note because when I make when I change one tag, suddenly it won't have a pair. So I won't be able to see where it ends, right? That red line. But I'm just making a note. It starts on 27 and it ends in 109 or so. If yours doesn't, then make a note of what yours is. But let's change line 27, where I've got div. That one should be section. A section is a complete screen of content. I'm sorry, how do you do that? You click it and type it. So we're going to delete where it says section, and we're going to then go to the very end, line 109, and make sure that that slash div is a slash section. That's why I wrote it down, because now I'm losing track. Where's that div? Well, I, I wrote it down. It's about line 109, slash div, is no longer correct. That should be slash section. And then when you type it, it should highlight to then say it goes back to the first one. So while I'm here, I see that I'm at the footer. I'm here already. It's just a simple div div. We're going to do them all, but I see the footer here. What should be the correct tag instead of div for the footer? Footer. That's easy. So this one's, if you want to write it down, it's 104 and 108. That div should be footer slash footer. When we were doing it together last time, remember I said we want to use the order of heading 1, 2, 3, 4. Heading 4 in the footer. So I recommend we do that as well. We've got a heading 3 here in the footer. I want to use heading 4s. This is not required, but we're doing it this way for the logic of it, in that heading 1 is going to be up on my header. In my content area, I'll have header 2 and 3, and then the last thing then will be a header 4. Well, maybe I will use header 2, 3, and 4 in my content, so I can use <laughs> header heading 5, um, in the footer. A logic. I'm going to save that. I'm going to back up to the top again. We did section on line 27. We want to then do <coughs> data role, we want to fix data role header, line 28. It starts on 28. In my case, follow the red line, it ends at 52. So my data role header has what tag? Header, yes. So let's change that div to header and its pair, line 52. Yes. 
For a few people it hasn't, and for you it did, so I don't know what to say, but anyway, we will download a local version because it's still going to be better for us. Because what if we lose our internet connection? So on the header, the very first header here, heading 1, so line 29, should be H1. Line 32, we have another div. This one is data roll nav bar. And that one starts on line 32. And it goes to 51. We have not talked about this one yet, but there is an HTML5 tag specifically designed to contain navbar content, to, to contain our nav, our nav elements. And it was called and it is called nav, N-A-V. So change line 32 from div to nav. And now we know that what's inside of that section is, is nav a nav bar, navigation elements. So close its pair, that's on line 51 or so. Nav, N-A-V. And data roll nav bar. Uh, you'll, just have, you'll just have to memorize that. The data roll is nav bar, and the tag is nav. Just like you should memorize its data roll page, but its tag is section. Header, data role header is tag header. So some of them are uh, consistent and some of them not. Again, because it's like a global project and such. <coughs> We've got these unordered lists, bullet points. Don't worry about those. They're perfectly fine the way they are. Bullet points. Let's see what's next. Div data role content. That one starts on line 53. And it goes over way down to 103. And so that needs to be article. So article, then we've got heading, heading 2, that's fine. Div data will collapsible. So everything else should be fine here. We will use these as plain old divs, generic containers <coughs> that have been upgraded with a data rule. I'll put my code at, in the folder at the end of the day, of course. But um, that's what we wanted to do regarding the actual code itself, upgrading it. Instead of generic divs, we want to use the correct tags, the modern tags. Just to confirm it's still working as before, you want to run it in your web browser. So go up to the Run menu, Firefox. It should look as, as it did, basically, in the Kodika editor. Nothing should suddenly look really weird. That means you misspelled something or, or, or you did something. So these open up, there's nothing inside of them because we haven't put anything into those divs. These buttons go nowhere yet because we haven't linked them to any pages yet. And these buttons at the top don't go anywhere yet because there's no pages to go to yet. But they highlight. Those icons are there. There's the footer. We still have a ways to go, of course. But here's what we've got so far. Now what I want to do is um, this uh, to further upgrade it. I also want to use the um, the latest uh, jQuery and jQuery Mobile code. So we're going to download the latest code 
together, save it into our folder, edit our code so that it points to the latest versions, and then we'll have the latest, hottest code. So let's go to your web browser if you're not there already, and let's go to jQueryMobile.com. jQueryMobile.com. This is where we've gone to previously to look at the demos and to read the manual and such. But this time we're going to use it to download our code, and then later we'll use it also to uh, for other cool features. Go to jQueryMobile.com, and then on the right side you'll see a big, big old button to download. The custom download and latest stable. We'll do the latest stable one. It's just going to give us all of the available code. More efficiently, we would create a custom download to only select the pieces of jQuery Mobile we're really going to use. So it might give us, you know, a hundred bits of code with latest stable, and we really only need 13 of bits of that code. So we would get a custom download. We're not going to do that just yet because we want to explore as much as we can about it. But if this were my real app, I would only download what I need because that would make your app more efficient. It would download faster, it would be more responsive, and once we make it an actual app, again, it'll be a smaller app. Click on Latest Stable, and then we have a bunch of options. No, actually, it just says right away download. Okay, great. So you want to... I'm in Firefox, so here it's asking open or save. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna open it because it comes with a zip file. It comes in a zip file. Where did you click the button? Uh, the button latest stable on the right side. Again, depends on your web browser. But the point is, it's gonna give me a zip file, and in that zip file, it's got 19 things. I don't need all 19 of these things. Let me just back up for a moment. We're downloading the full featured set of jQuery Mobile. We only need a few of these things. We're going to extract the pieces that we need from the zip file into our mobile folder. So I've got two windows. One window... One window is the zip file, and one window is my project. What we need from the zip file, so you don't have to extract all. You can simply, from the zip file, drag and drop. We're going to drag and drop the second to the last ones. jQuery Mobile 145min.js, jQuery Mobile 145min.css. We don't need that map or anything else. And be careful because there's also one here, jQuery Mobile 145 CSS. But we want the min, the minified versions, the more compact, uh, efficient versions. So I want to select both of those, and you can then simply drag them from your zip file to your project. Oops. See that? I'm, I'm taking what I want from the zip file. Those two. It's the last, the second to the last two. So this the first two, two at the top. You said it's the same thing. You just show on the side. Yes. These two here? Yeah, the first two. Like I said, this one right here is the minified version. It's the more compact. Oh, the min. I see. The the minified version, which is which is more streamlined and efficient. These two would work, technically, but they would make your app a little larger, maybe not download as quickly. These two have been compacted down to work faster. Yes, yes just like this. There's the index, Kodika. We'll put them in there. They're going to be part of our project, so they need to be in the project folder. And before I leave the screen, I also need to copy over this images folder. All of those great Kodika icons are not being developed by code. They are actual little graphics. And they're in that images folder, in that zip file. So drag that images folder, the whole thing, just drag it from the zip file. 
into your project folder. And that'll take a little bit longer because it's a bunch of little icons. So let's stop and make sure that we're all on the same page here. In our project folder, the one we developed in Codica last hour, in our project folder, I'm copying the uncompressed jQuery mobile JavaScript and CSS files and the images folder. Does everyone have that? Does anyone need a little help? Where did the images file come from? From the zip file. So if we did this properly, this is giving us the jQuery mobile library. This is giving us the ability to use data role equals page, data transition equals flip, um, what else, data role equals collapsible set. That's what jQuery mobile is letting us do. It's letting us do the data icon equals gear, because it's the image right there. But jQuery mobile still requires the parent jQuery library. So JavaScript is like all possible code. jQuery is like a simplified version of that. And then jQuery mobile is built on top of that, which focuses on mobile projects. So we need now the jQuery JavaScript file. I'm going to go back to the, to the web. And all of this is part of a, a larger parent organization. I'm in the jQuery mobile website, which is those three little squares. And this very first square here, or this very first icon, that's the jQuery portion of it. And there's some other ones related, jQuery UI and Sizzle and Q, however you pronounce that, QUnit, QUnit, who knows, Web 2.0 names. So go over to jQuery.com or click the icon, and then we're going to download the jQuery JavaScript file. <clears throat> so go to jQuery.com and you'll see here um, you'll see a download, a big download button right there on the right side. Click that and then we're presented here. The jQuery 1.x family and the jQuery 2.x family. Which one do we want? Well, if we read, it shows. It says here that the jQuery 1 branch and the 2 branch are just about the same, except that the 2 branch does not support old browsers. Internet Explorer 6, 7, and 8. Who cares? We're never going to put our project... Our project is ultimately intended for mobile devices. There's no such thing as Internet Explorer 6, 7, or 8 on a mobile device. And yes, there, there, it, it, we will have a, a, a web project, ultimately, but still, these are fading out. Internet Explorer 6 um, and 7 and 8 are not uh, as relevant anymore. Yes? So the reason we're downloading this, and this is not something we'd be doing if we were actually developing the app or another app later, to be accessing it online, or um, we could access it online, but if we lose our internet connection, our app breaks. That's the whole point of downloading a copy for ourselves, so that if we don't have an internet access, our app will still work, because we need these files. So we are downloading it right now, and we're downloading it right now, and this project basically can be our template. Once we fully set this up, it's got all the appropriate latest HTML code. It's got the latest jQuery and jQuery mobile. So this project right here could be our template that we use over and over and over. But we need to set it up right the first time. So the way this works is, well, do we want the 
backwards compatible version or the forward compatible one? I'm going to say we're going to go with the forward compatible version. We want to look to the future. So here it says, do you want the compressed version, the uncompressed version? Do you want the minified version or the full version? The minified version, .min, .js, will download faster, will be more streamlined, and so forth. So I want the compressed production version. The weird thing is that if you click on it, it'll just spit out the code at you. What you want to do is right-click, download the compressed production jQuery 2.1.4, right-click it. You should have your web browser say something like save file or save link. I'm going to save that file, save that link. And obviously you're going to save this file in your project folder. So I'm in Firefox and it's asking me, where would you like to save it? Don't change the name, but I'm saving it in the project folder, this mobile website folder that I got from Kodika. Uncompressed. We can't do very much with the compressed version. It's zipped up and it's not really editable. No, no, no. Uh, we are getting the compressed version of the code, but we're not saving this in the Kodika compressed folder. That was the question, I think. So yes, we want the compressed version, and we're saving it in our mobile website folder. So we're going to save that. Um. And so if we look in the folder, this is what your folder should look like. Index, two Kodika files, jQuery, two jQuery mobile files, and an image folder. Okay, this is on your disk. So on the screen, let's see what we're going to find the disk. It's not going to show you the other files, it's only going to show you JavaScript files. Thank you. 
Okay, so uh, this is a two-part uh, a two-part thing. We needed to download the most latest version of the libraries, and it's simply a file, a few files. Part one. Part two is well, we need to edit our code to say use these files because our code is saying use the files online. Let's go back to Notepad, and then in Notepad line twelve, it says use the jQuery mobile CSS file on the server. Wrong. We want to use the one in our folder. So we're going to need to change line 12 where we've got href equals all of this stuff. We're going to remove everything in there except the file. Do you see that this is a path to a specific file? At the very end we've got slash jQuery.mobile.css, which is inside of a folder 131, which is inside of a folder mobile, which is on a server cloudfront.net, HTTP. So you're going to remove all of that part from HTTP to this slash so that it only leaves the jQuery.css on line 12. Be careful that you don't delete a, a quotation mark, for example. Line 12 should be shrunk down to simply say jQuery.mobile-131.min.css. Exactly. That's also referencing an old version. And we've got what? 1.4.5. 1.4.5. So also change that to say jQuery Mobile dot one point four point five. Now this is pointing to the local version we have in our folder. If the internet goes out, our our app will still work. These over here are relying on an internet connection. You lose your internet connection, you lose all of your functionality. So that's going to root folder. They could go anywhere we want, but I'm simply putting them on the root folder here because then our path is also a simple path. Line 15 we can leave alone. That one's fine. Line 18. Okay, line 18 points to cloudfront.net, so it goes to online. And that goes to jQuery 191 min.js. So that one's the same thing. Line, um, line 18, this is src equals HTTP, blah, 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 remove all of that CloudFrontNet stuff just to leave the jQuery mobile, uh, just to leave the jQuery.js file, which then, of course, we need to change the version number. Line 18, so, shim, so, so 
line 18 should simply be pointing to jQuery js and again we've got a better version a newer version of jQuery 2.1.4. And then line 19 should be the same thing. We're going to remove that source all the way down to simply jQuery mobile and it should be the same version number as we had on 12. The difference is that this is .js and that one up there is .css. Lastly, line 22 is pointing over to kodika.extra.js. We're not going to use that version at all. We're going to not download it or anything. We're going to use the version that's in our folder. The one that's in our folder is just an empty document where we will add our custom CS, our custom JavaScript later. So line 22, simply cut that down to say kodika.extra, uh, kodika.ext.js. That script source equals kodika.ext.js. <clears throat> we'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. Which is remember when we were working on our our jQuery mobile project from scratch, uh, and we were when we were talking about um, well. When we, when we had our intro to JavaScript, we wrote all of our JavaScript inside of a couple of script tags. Script slash script, and then we had JavaScript code in the middle. We had all of that at the very end of our document before slash body. Remember that. If you don't, we did that uh, sometime last week. And the point of putting our script before the end of our body was sometimes the JavaScript needs to access something in the HTML and if it's and if we're first saying because it needs top to bottom if we're trying to access JavaScript first but the HTML doesn't exist yet we could get problems so we wrote all of our JavaScript at the very end that guarantees that all the HTML first loaded and was rendered and then we get to the JavaScript which can then reference the HTML here, technically, this could cause us problems if we're trying to access this, this JavaScript stuff before the HTML stuff even exists. Because it goes from top to bottom, and it stops at a point and executes those, those commands, and then it goes next and next and next. So the last thing we'll do, then we'll take a break, is actually we want to move all of this JavaScript, JavaScript stuff out of the head and down to the body. So let me show you first, and then we'll do it. I'm going to select all of these lines of JavaScript cut I could drag but it's a long way and I'm gonna paste them right below or right into slash body again let me show you quickly then we'll do it together but do you see the concept I'm gonna move them from the head to right above slash body past the section so let me, let's do it together you should select You should select lines uh, 14 to 22. I'm sorry, uh, 17. 17 to 22. Yes, 17 to 22. The JavaScript file, I was going to get the CSS file. That should always be in the head. So 17, which is the comment, and then down to 22, which is the Kodika 
select all of that and cut it. Right click cut. Don't copy it. You cannot have two references, uh, two references to the same file. You'll get problems. So you want to cut it. Jump all the way down to the line right above slash body, which is 105. Give yourself a couple of spaces right before body and paste. So after slash section, before slash body, I pasted what I cut. I pasted what I cutted from um, the head down here. All of that. This is to ensure that the HTML content loads before we try to use it or manipulate it with the JavaScript. Vice versa, we might be able, we might be trying to access HTML content that doesn't exist yet because it hasn't rendered it. To make sure this works and then to take our break, you want to save it and run it in Firefox. Just one moment. You want to save it and run it in Firefox and it should look like the familiar, it's no longer, um, you know, that, that old style, it's the modern style of the black and the white and the gray and the the CRISPR icons and such is what it should look like. If it suddenly looks all weird, our break is coming up and I'll help you out. But if it looks good like this, great, take a break. It's 8.30. We're back at 8.40. Be with you one moment.